right, for you guys who uh, complained about our audio. I don't think it's a good idea. Something seems weird. <laughs> We had an incident last night. It was um, as if we were attending a funeral. I'm Cindy, and this is Shell. We sold everything and set off on an adventure, living and cruising on a boat named Seashell. Click subscribe and sit back as we show you that it's possible for all of us to live an extraordinary life. Good glorious morning from Emerald Bay. Um, we're leaving today. We had an awesome stay here, but it is time to leave. Just thought we'd show you how we start our mornings. We've got coffee done, and then we always start with a smoothie. These ingredients are a lot of what's in the Bahamas. We are out of like berries and stuff. We totally provision in Costco in our freezer, um, but we're out of fruit now. But this is how we start our morning every day, every day. Uh, coconut water. So I have some, but um, there's coconuts in the trees. Sheldon could be getting the coconuts and we could be getting fresh. So I do uh, a cup or two cup. Oranges are always in the Bahamas. And we had a fresh pineapple we got at uh, Bo's convenience store uh, the weekend. Um, and I cut it up, froze it, cantaloupe's always here. And then greens, um, I buy as much whenever I see spinach or juicing greens, I buy as much as I can and I freeze it. Okay. Orange, cooking with Cindy. All right, so an orange. Uh, that's pineapple. And these are juicing greens with that. Always bring some kind of nutritional powder with me from the States. So I have a few bags of that. There's a lot of goodness in this. It's berries and um, super good. Okay, I have a blend tech. I really love the blend tech. Breakfast is served. We also take a shot of turmeric every now and then. I'm not sure if liquid is better. I don't know if it dyes our teeth. We're hoping not. Now we're off to where? Georgetown. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a couple hours of work first, then we'll go to Georgetown. And my day is not the same unless I have one of these. I just feel so much better, so much more energy. And that's cooking with Cindy. So if you like, if you like this to see kind of what we do in the galley and how we eat and stuff we do and just uh, let us know. Let us know in the comments below. Click like, subscribe. We just love to hear from you guys. Uh, it's why we do it. Uh, otherwise, we would just uh, not. <laughs> it was now time to leave Emerald Bay Marina. We said goodbye to the awesome staff, got ready to cast off the lines, and head 10 nautical miles to Georgetown, where we plan to anchor off Monument Hill.
had just finished work and we are now in at Monument Hill is what we're gonna go and check out. We made it to Monument Hill. Look at this, look at the view. And right down here is where you write your name of your boat with rocks. I think it was a beacon with some sort of light on the top for sailors. Now we're off to go check out the ocean side. Alright, for you guys who uh, complained about our audio, we went and bought some equipment. Cindy's going to give a brief explanation and demonstration. <laughs> well, we went, yes, and we bought the external mic and this wind puff so that our audio would be more better and less windy. We're leaving Emerald Bay and we're like showing you, I, show, I brought you all around. We did a bit that day. When we get home, and there's definitely no wind in the audio. It is nothing, zero. No so, audio. <laughs> we're giving it another try. We've um, fixed it, have we, Sheldon? Another pro tip. <laughs> if you um, hook an external mic up to a GoPro 7, line in is not external mic in. It is standard mic, although it sounds like standard mic would be standard mic built into the thing. It's not. I plugged it in and I said line in is the mic setting. Went off recording, didn't test it, recorded it all over the place, and we had no audio. Oh, so it's supposed to be standard mic. St standard mic is the setting oh. if you're hooking up an external mic. You also need this other thing. It's like a very expensive mic cable from GoPro. Yeah, you have to buy this and the mic and the case and the case all for like just to put a mic on. Yeah. Not so cheap. not cheap just for you guys. <laughs> oh. We, yeah, but I mean it's nice. We are our audio is crap. Yeah, we're not we know our audio is not great. So we're off Stocking Island anchored and we are going to take our first trip into Georgetown. I've got one main mission besides getting a few groceries and that is to get a bow pennant flag because our searching for seashells flag is looking really rickety. Really rickety. Yeah, Plus, it's not looking good. What? It doesn't look good. It doesn't all. look good, no. And I like to use it for telling which way the wind's blowing when I'm coming into an anchorage. Also see if we can find a bohemian flag, another one, because it's about one quarter of the size it used to be. And uh, I'm going to see if they got a Canadian flag, but I doubt they will. It mines pink and white instead of red and white. I have a tip. Oh, oh we're gonna 
bow tips with Cindy. <laughs> Not really, but I was just uh, garbage. We're going to go in and bring in our garbage. But um, when you have to store garbage on a boat, I buy uh, compactor bags. And then you can, they're sturdy. And then if you have to store garbage for a while, oh, I'm working out. Um, yeah. I always have them on board for when they, we're when we when we have long open, periods of time. And you can jam stuff in there. Yeah, you can like push the garbage down, you can fit a lot in. Compactor bags. Or, I always you or. can get a trash compactor and it'll do it for you. I don't have the room for a trash compactor. I could, I, I guess. Yeah, where the trash can is. Someone tell me Craft forty fours actually have a trash compactor there. But I don't have one. Right. So, so you're is... the trash compactor. Oh. Hot tip of the day. All right, I'll show you the flags. It's Sheldon daydreaming again. What are you daydreaming about, I wonder? Lemmy. That's a pretty boat. sinkers, tools, bog hinges, everything. Everything you want. Found one. Forty dollars. Yeah. Yeah, the binding yeah. with a needle. Yeah. You weave this with by hand, right? And then I stitch it on the machine. Wow. But this pad I'm doing by hand. You can do it by machine also, depending on the type of corner you put in. Yeah. We put another corner in. We call the outside corner. This one is the inside corner. Right. But the outside one, we can do it on the machine. So I have to gather the straw yeah. from the B side. Yeah. Yeah. And then you put it to cure. Yeah. And then you strip it up, then you do the weaving. Wow. And like the colored part, you either have to swinch it, yeah, you, you dye it, or you smoke it. So much work. Yes, a lot of work. A, a lot, lot of work. work, yeah. Yeah. Last year, they had all this done up yeah. with vendors and stuff. So that's the service at the Exuma Market. You go to the Exuma Market. Bring it to your boat for you, to your dinghy. I mean, this is service with a smile. I'm really pleased with all my fruits and vegetables. It was a little under $100, um, and I got all of this stuff. Um, it's good. The Exuma market is good. The potatoes, onions, zucchini, even some Brussels sprouts, spinach, green onion, lots of broccoli, pepper. Look at the fruit for my smoothies. These were a little expensive. Sushi, 10 bucks for only five. A little expensive, but we do like sushi. So next morning I got up I cut up my pineapple, my cantaloupe, and my honeydew melon, and I'll freeze all this uh, for my smoothies. Uh, I ate some pineapple, but we would have had more. 
And I've kept some for uh, veggie fajitas tonight, pineapple and jalapenos with fajitas. Very, very good. Anyways, I just wanted to show you that you get a lot of food out of like um, a cantaloupe and a honeydew melon and a pineapple. A lot of good frozen food. We are heading into Monument Beach. We're excited. It's actually quite beautiful here. So I'm gonna catch the drone. What do I have to do? Tell me what I gotta do. I don't think it's a good idea. Let's land it in the sand, Sheldon. I don't think I can do it. Open your slides as wide as you can. I think we stop it. Look at this. <laughs> Face your fears, Cindy. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. No big deal. <laughs> Ain't no thing. This is great. No visit to Georgetown and Elizabeth Harbor would be complete without visiting Chat and Chill. We get a little surprise on our visit this time. Something seems weird. <laughs> Very weird. So our movies are on the TV here, which is really, really strange. Sheldon wants to go further in. 
Sheldon wants to go further and further and further in on Crab Key. That is silence. What are you doing, Sheldon? Working. We were supposed to go to Long Island today. Should be, but it's a five hour cruise and I got a lot of work to do, so I can't do it. Wah, the pains wah. of working while you're in the Bahamas. Yeah, it takes us forever to get anywhere, and but it's, see, it's still paradise. It is. I seen a eagle ray right beside the boat fly right out of the water. And back here. So just right there, like 20, 30 feet max. I had a craving for chocolate and I have um, a recipe that I'd share with you. You can whip it up really quick. Five ingredients, you freeze it and you have chocolate within an hour. You need uh, cocoa powder, vanilla, coconut oil, maple syrup, peanut butter, and some walnuts. Just have to mix it all up. Add the nuts, gooey goodness. And you just pour this into a dish. I line it with parchment paper, put it in the freezer for an hour. Yeah, you have seductive walnut fudge. Make it look a little pretty. The area on the southwest side of Crab Key, or the Red Shanks as it is called, holds a set of deep water pockets surrounded by shallower water. The shallower areas can be anchored in by shallow draft boats, but for the most part, you will want to check your charts for the seven plus foot pockets. For deeper draft vessels, make sure you come through here at mid to high tide to be able to position yourselves in the deeper water. The area gives fantastic 360 degree protection. The sand is thick and deep here, so dragging your anchor out of one of those holes is slim. If you wanted to set it and forget it, this is one place that you can do that for an extended period. Hey guys! Um... We had an incident last night and uh, we didn't take any video. It was um, as if we were attending a funeral, sort of. Sheldon had a little bit of an accident. The drone is no longer, which is a shame. I mean, He's had drone incidents with the splash drone. He finally got this lovely machine and it actually works well. Um, last night, it is not waterproof. So, last night, I had a successful drone flight. So after that flight, the sun was setting and I said, well, I'll send it up another time. Getting cocky with how well this thing flies and lands, takes off from my hands and yada yada. I decided to try to, off the back deck, just under the hard top, to reach out under the, outside the hard top, and hard top is right here, with one hand trying to get it up. So I was holding it sort of like this. And I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was the rear obstacle avoidance sensor. When I went to take off, it sort of went forward. And something happened. I don't know if the boat was moving towards, like swinging on anchor towards it and it hit something. But anyway, it seemed to tip down, hit something, including my fingers, mm -hmm. and down into the ocean. 15 feet of ocean. Yep. I was very upset because we got three months left in the Bahamas and I don't know if I'm going to get another one. We do. I do have insurance. Yes. So we'll see. So that. pro tip, mm -hmm. if you have one of these and you're on a boat and you're on the water, you will lose it somewhere. You're <laughs> going to crash it. You're going to do something the by the repair replacement service from DJI. 
We'll see. Because it's, it's still going to cost me 120 bucks maybe to get it replaced. Right. I've already spent money on the warranty, but I mean, if you're doing vlogging and stuff like that, I mean, there's nothing like aerial shots, in my opinion. I love it. I love flying it. So I got to get another one. So I don't know when it's going to be. Maybe we have to get back to Florida before I get it. Because it's going to be hard to get one of these shipped into the Bahamas, I would think. Anyway, Monday I talk to DJI and see. And we'll see how easy the process will be. Yeah. yeah There's water in under the lens. There's, I mean, still water, depending on how I tip it up. Or you can't put it in a bag of rice. I put... It just doesn't, it's just not. It doesn't turn on. No. Anyway, so. sad state of affairs. My drone is dead. If you like this video, click the like button. If you're new here, subscribe. Click the notification icon next to the subscribe button to get notified of upcoming videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Give us a comment down below but anything you want. Cheers, and long may your big jib drop.